Oscars. Those damn Oscars. Yeah, those damn Oscars. <laughs> Out of all the vices in all the world, the Oscars just had to be mine. You know, Jim, I can go take it to go see a, um, a therapist. What? You fool! I'll drown it out with booze like a real man! Uh, another! Um, what now? I said, give me another! Is looking at you. Yeah, fuck. <sighs> play me the song. What? I said, play me the song, Sam. Um, it's Damien. Just do it. You did it for the Oscars. You can do it for me. Review. If you don't, you're going to regret it. Maybe not today, and maybe not tomorrow, but someday. Now get to it! Okay, okay! <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. Only one way to find out! Casablanca is that really popular black and white film that everyone quotes and keeps telling you to see, even though you don't want to. It's been discussed to death, but now we're here to give our opinions on it. Two overweight, white-looking 30-something-year-olds. Finally! Greetings, ladies and gentlemen of the internet, and welcome to our newest episode of The Oscar Goes To. I'm Jan Michael. And I'm Melinda. And today's Oscar goes to Casablanca. It's, it's right here. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's right here. Let's begin. Casablanca. City of hope and despair. So, Melinda, Casablanca, one of the most influential films of all time. People quote the movie. They love the movie. Mm -hmm. They're very passionate about the movie. Mm -hmm. So maybe for this review, we uh, should probably be a little bit more sensitive to, to the people and their, their feelings. Mm. So, uh, with that said, what did you think of Casablanca? Meh. Oh my god! He's looking at you, kid. Okay, so this is my first time ever having seen the movie, with a lot of build-up leading up to it. Um, it was a it was a pretty good movie, to be honest. Um, it had Mainly the things that I liked about it were a couple of side characters like Sam the pianist and then the guard, the main guy for Casablanca. Um, but it just was an okay movie. Like for all the buildup that it had, I don't know that maybe it just was too much. I think this is the one that we're finally going to disagree upon because uh, I actually really like the movie. And it's funny because I think you and I were of the same mindset when I was younger and I first saw the movie. I, I thought it was overrated. Uh, I thought it was fine. It was, it was enjoyable. But uh, when I was younger, I was just like, I don't see what the big deal is about this movie. Uh, and then kind of seeing it again, 
um, after all these years, I think I came to realize, wow, this is actually something I, I really enjoyed. I was much more engaged with it this time. It's not perfect. I mean, there's no such thing as a perfect film, and I do have faults with it. Uh, but overall, I was very entertained with the film. Uh, so you didn't like the protagonist? Oh, Humphrey. <laughs> Uh, you know what? I think he was, he was fine. I just, I don't know. There was just something about him that, don't get me wrong, he read the script well, he acted well for his part. It just, he wasn't my favorite. I, I really like his character uh, before the, the girl comes into the picture. Uh, the way he acts, just like very aloof, but there's still very much uh, charismatic, characteristics within him. You, you still like to watch him even though he, he he's very distant from everybody else and just has that really suave coolness to his voice, the, how, the way he speaks. Uh, and I really liked his character. Uh, it, it does kind of start to get melodramatic, I think, when the girl comes into the picture. Okay, so on the relationship side, which also is probably why I wasn't too like feeling for the character, um, Ingrid Bergman, uh, she just wasn't very special. I don't know if if that's just the way she was written or if that's just how she portrayed her. Um, she didn't have like a lot going, not anything that was unique to anyone else other than being the object of his affection. But I just didn't really appreciate their romance together. Same thing, the back and forth with the, oh, I'm gonna tell you something, but I'm gonna be super roundabout about it. And then he gets mad and she gets mad that he gets mad. And I'm just like, whoa not my kind of romance. Yes, and that's what I think is definitely the weakest point of the film, even though in a way that's kind of what the movie's about, just they're, they're kind of romance together and what happened in their past. Uh, but again, there's just, there's so much good stuff in between all that stuff. And, and really when you, when you see the movie, uh, their interactions, you know, it, it's only a small part of the movie. There, there's just so much to it. Uh, there's his relationship with the uh, officer that runs Casablanca, uh, and you know he, he's kind of like this uh, almost anti-hero, like he's he's helping out the Nazis, but at the same time, you know he's just kind of more in it for himself. And uh, Sam, the pianist, you know he's he's uh, just you know the few times that he was on, on screen, I, I really enjoyed seeing him, and and the way he kind of talked to uh, to Bogart and. Just this relationship that they have with each other is just a simple relationship, but you know that they, they came to Casablanca together. So there's just like kind of an unspoken uh, friendship there that you really appreciate. So I, I think that's all the strong things in between the romance that really sticks out when I, I, I think of the film. Agreed. Again, they were my two favorite things about the movie and what carried me through the whole thing. Um, I appreciate old movies mostly for humor or, you know, thriller, but um, I liked probably the main guy who headed Hot Casablanca in the first place. I think his name was Louis, if I'm not mistaken. And then Sam was so endearing. Like, you were just like, Sam is such a good friend. And then Humphrey's over here angry and drunk and then whining, so. Well, that's his charm. His, his charm's <laughs> being this. <laughs> He's not so charming, <laughs> but. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I thought it was charming. Oh, then you go for Humphrey. I'll stick with Sam. Uh, I will say one other weak part to it is uh, the the guy that is with um, Ingrid. Um, Her husband? Yes. So... Spoilers. Yes. For spoilers. Hope you saw the film by now. Probably haven't, even though everybody talks about it. Uh, so, uh, you know, he's kind of this whatever, like almost like a blank slate. He's supposed to be like this big kind of hero, he like escapes any situation whatsoever, and he doesn't really have much of a personality. Uh, he's just kind of there to be the other guy. Uh, and that I thought was kind of disappointing. I, I wanted him to do more in the film, but he's just, like he doesn't even get angry when, when he knows there's something more going on there. He's just sort of like, uh, you know, I believe you, you know, just like, you don't have to worry about me, and that that was a little bit odd i will admit so. i would be like hell no that's my wife like excuse me yeah sir no <laughs> like his lack of passion towards her or for her um 
was also off-putting, I think, mm. because he didn't fight for her, he didn't push her to her happiness, he just was a man sitting in this role to give them conflict mm -hmm. and resulting in the end where Humphrey pulls his famous ending. Mm -hmm. I, I really like that ending because it's it's one of those endings that is not the old school happy ending type of, of film. There is a happy ending, uh, but it's not the one that you think is going to happen. Like, oh, uh, the main guy is going to get the girl, you know, they're going to fly off and, and, you know, the other guy is either going to get killed or he's going to accept the situation. And it just doesn't play that way. And maybe that was what was so famous about the film back then. It's just, it was very, this, this almost bittersweet ending. And I could kind of see maybe audiences going, oh my God. Yeah, that, that's the right choice, but it hurts to see uh, that might have been the mindset that, that the audience was in. And I could see it. I, I could see why it'd be popular. So, Melinda, would you recommend Casablanca to today's audiences? And do you think it should have won the Oscar? I think it was important for me to see it because it was so, so widely known for being such a great movie. Um, so I would recommend seeing it. I just don't know the movies of the time if it should have won best best movie but um, my own opinion doesn't say it was that good and I'm of the complete opposite mindset uh, first and foremost you should see the movie uh, just because you know even if it's not your thing I think the importance of the film uh, all the iconic lines things like that I, I think it's something you should see just at the very least to say you've seen it um, even if it's not your type of film but more than that, I, I, I do see why this would have been an Oscar winner, especially at the time. So uh, I do think it's recommendable and I definitely agree with it winning Best Picture. Uh, and then just repeated viewings. If you're not into it the first time, maybe on a second viewing, uh, you might enjoy it a bit more. Next time we can do the sequel to Casablanca. And there was a sequel? Mm hmm. It was called Casa Negra, but it was considered too racist, even for back then. And don't get me started on Casa Maria. Whew. They had a field day with that one. Hey, have you been drinking? No, I. Jan! What, what, uh, what is this? What? That's you! What is. <laughs>